It's good to see everybody here. Jer Proverbs 14, 12. This message, I want you to say it's my message. No one else's. I don't know if you've ever heard a message and thought, boy, I'm glad they're here because they need this. <laughs> well, no, this is your message. You're by yourself, nobody else. Proverbs 14, 12 says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You may be seated. I have here a compass. I've got it on my phone. I was trying to find. Brother Linville had an old compass at the house. I could not find it. But um, I am uh, I'm trying to figure it out where I'm at. I'm uh, almost, I think, to my right. Let me just go where I know this is. Right toward Andrew, I'm north. This is north, right there. And so um, this is west toward. If I was going on a journey and I was looking at this compass and you were following me, it would take us a while to get there. Because I'm trying to figure out the compass here. And I'm pointing at you, Sister Claire, due west, due west. And so I wanted to all say, Glenn, Minnie's doing good from her surgery. Good, good. We've been praying for her. She had a knee replacement. This compass that I have in my hand is what, of course, years and years and years ago, they would use to find their destiny or where their journey ends where they need to go, what they need to do. And they lived by this compass as they traveled. And they knew due west, knew due south. We all know what a compass is. But a compass is something that as you travel, you must, you must constantly watch it because if, as this scripture says, there is a way which seemeth, right unto man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. John, John F. Kennedy, if you read my husband's book, uh, Man in Midlife Crisis, I was looking for him. I could not believe I had it. I'm just almost panicked because I, I, I have to have that book in my library. I can't believe I don't have it in my library. And I thought, where is it? Because we packed up stuff to get painted in there. And, but in there, he was telling about John F. Kennedy Jr. And John F. Kennedy Jr. was flying a plane with his wife and sister-in-law. And I remembered when that went down. Most of us remember that. And I, Brother Linville used it in his book. John F. Kennedy had gotten an airplane that I, I have it here written that he did not have he did not have instrument knowledge he did not he wasn't certified to fly by instrument he was only certified to fly by visual and so in that they said what happened to him he started a graveyard spiral, thinking what they figured it out when they analyzed it. They call it a, a spectral disorientation of a pilot. It's something that happens to pilots, that they absolutely cannot tell if they're going north, up or down, east or west. They can't tell it. If they're in a fog, they, you, you think you're going by your senses. If I'm going up or down, they said probably 
he no more knew he was flying straight down in that fog, straight to his death. And he flew his plane just straight into the ocean, thinking that he was horizontal, going straight. And they said legally, he was legally permitted to leave. The, I read it this morning. He was legally able to be sent out. They let him go because there was, the visual <clears throat> was challenged in the fact that the basic landmarks, you could see them, but apparently a fog came in and it, it changed the vision, the visual of the flight and fog, and he got into all of that, and whatever it was that happened, and he lost the visual, and then he went by his senses. And so, this morning, I am telling you that we cannot live by God and for God by moods, by our senses, to the point that everything you feel in the spirit or anything you feel has to be filtered by the instrument panel. It has to be looked at by the word of God. You cannot, you cannot say, well, I feel that. No, you have to go by the word of God. You have to lay you have to get on your knees on the altar and you have to say to God I cannot I cannot uh, decide everything just by your human resources there you cannot go by your human resources and by your human uh, emotions or or anything like that no this compass this word of God this relationship you have with God, you have to go to God and say, God, you're my compass. Tell me, I've got it. I'm going this way. But all of a sudden, I feel like we should be going this way. Or, or I, my opinion is this way. No, get back on the route. Get back on the due course. This is what God has planned for you or planned for your family. This is it. Hallelujah, a lot of people go by their feelings and you are going to fly straight into the ocean. They said they found those, they found them, they found them at the bottom of the sea. They found them strapped in their seat with a part of the plane on top of them. They were still buckled in. They were still as if they were flying, but still down at the bottom of the sea when they recovered their body. It's imperative that your compass was set the minute you got the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus' name and God filled you with the Holy Ghost. God said, this is the due course that I have planned for your life. This is what I've got planned for your destiny and for your life and for your future and for your family. This, this thing goes off and around. Every which way I turn, it changes. My flesh is so un unbelievable. My flesh can turn and twist. It can be offended. It can be moved by moods. It can be affected by weather. Oh, my word, it can be affected by a word. It can be affected by so many things that can be changing my course. And that is the ultimate plan of Satan. I have here in my notes, Satan is a strategist. Satan is a strategist. If you can visualize, number one, Satan is not omnipresent. Satan is not omnipresent. He is not everywhere at one time. God is. If you can vision, I'm going to give you a, sort of an allegory. Satan is a form. Satan is a thing, a person, or I'm going to use that as a reference. He has a third 
of angels that fell from heaven as his army. Those demons are his army. He is a strategist. Vision NASA with a head, head director and all of his all of his staff, NASA running whatever, and just visualize there is a war room somewhere where Satan is sitting down giving direction to every demon in the world and put it in your brain that they have the capacity to zero in on every one of us. And they are not ignorant. They have been roaming about this earth. They know the ways of men. They see the way they act. They act, they tap into their weaknesses. They tap into their uh, propensities. They tap into uh, inferiority complexes. They know how to tap in to your little things that make you trigger your life to lose your direction by the Spirit of the Almighty God, and it gets you off. I've seen, I've seen wives get try to get their husbands off of the direction of God. They have, because they themselves have a problem in their life. I've seen husband, vice versa. I've even seen children change the direction of the compass for a family. I have. I've seen children change the compass of the direction of the family. Someone in the family needs to hold up the compass and say, as for me and my family, this is the way that God has directed my family and we're not going to deviate one bit about it. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. I've held this compass since I was nine years old. I've had every which way. I've had, had young men try to get me in the back seat of a car. I didn't, I looked at the compass. It's not going to happen. I've had been offered marijuana, LSD. When I was high school, I was offered it. I didn't come off. I looked at my compass. I looked at it. That compass was saying, I, this is the route that I've got for you right this way. I will not do that. I will not do that. I will not get off the route. This is the compass that I'm being led by, and I'm not going to deviate one iota because God has a plan for my life. God is still holding the compass for your life. God, God still is looking at this compass. God still has a direction. There's no one in this room. I don't believe there's one person in this room. That God, I would throw my phone down, but it's a little pricey. And so I'd like it another day. But, but God's not one to do this. Like, oh, well, they deviated. I'm getting rid of them. God's not that way. God is not that way. God is always, oh, I don't know why they hit, but there's something red came up. I don't know. I never know why they hit on this phone, whatever comes up. But, but God doesn't get rid of it. It's still in heaven. There's a master plan still in making in heaven. God is saying, come back to due course. Come on, turn your sails. Get it back. Get it back into the direction that I've always dreamed, what I've already planned for you. Get it back. It's so easy. Jeremiah 17, 5 and 7 says this. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusted in man and make him flesh his arm, which means his strength. He depends on his own strength and his own tenacity, his own mental capacity. 
everything about it, whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhibit it. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. Oh, you and I cannot depend on my flesh. I cannot depend on the strength of my own, uh, of mine own ways. You know, my dad was a very smart man. He was a design engineer. He was very smart. He was a, a Marine Staff Sergeant during World War II. But he had the earthly wisdom. He, he had an earthly wisdom about him. But he, he leaned toward his earthly wisdom as uh, the deciding factor of his whole life. But God, God wanted him, regretfully, to turn his life to the Lord. He was standing under my, hus- my brother's arm when they came to visit us. As my brother was a teenager to hear Brother Linville to preach a revival we were preaching. And my brother didn't have the Holy Ghost. And uh, my dad and mom came to visit. They did like a weekend trip. And my brother came up to get the Holy Ghost. And I remember that uh, my dad didn't know why my brother had his arms lifted up. He had walked up. And then when he got tired, my his arm elbow fell down. And when it fell down, it fell on my dad's shoulder. And my dad was just standing, looking at my brother while he was receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. I often thought, could you, would that not be a decisive compass to you? Could you not see right now as I witnessed to him and I tried to reach out to my dad many, many, many times, and yet he was, he was so stoic in his own strength. He was so stoic in his own uh, physical, mental capacity that he just did not need God. He did not need him. We could be flying today without looking at our instruments. I look at our young people. God has an instrument planned for you. God has a purpose for your life. God has a a finale destiny. He's he's saying to you, um, I'm just going to use this. Said, Kim, you're to go uh, due course west. It has 300, 330, whatever that is. But I'll let you figure that one out. But that course is your course till the day you die. No matter what trials you go through, no matter what heartache you're faced with, no matter how much of your family situation you've been involved in, your job, no matter if, if it's a, a hurricane comes, a tornado comes. Nothing's changed. It is still due course. It is still due course. The Bible says little foxes spoil the grapevines. Can I change it? Little little things that nip at your heels can make you think, you know what? Um, I, I just feel like we need to take, uh, the kids don't need to be involved in the church. I just feel like Uh, The children don't need to pick up Kleenexes. I know that sounds ridiculous. I feel like. I just don't feel like. You're going off of feel like. You don't feel nothing until you get feeling down on your knees. And you ask God, 
God, what I am feeling, tell me in the spirit what I should do, how should I lead, and how should I guide, and how should I direct my family and children. Feel? You may just need hormones that day. Seriously. I'm telling you the truth. People leave the church over hormones. People, yes, they do. People leave over the weirdest of weird. But I'm so glad that my mother a long time ago said, it's for me and my house. Come and follow me. This is a way that God directed. This is a way we're going through the storm, through the rain, through the hurts, through the offenses, through everything. I'm not weak. I am strong in the Lord, and this is a way that I'm going, no matter come hell or high water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Nothing shall offend me. Nothing shall change my direction. I am not that weak. I am not that weak. My husband worked for someone a long time ago in Tupelo that he had a uh, ceiling business like the ceilings in the in the room in there and so uh in the room in there uh, those hanging ceilings and he would say he would call my husband and said i just don't feel like working today cuz it's raining Well, he could stay home because he had money. It was his business. But Brother Linville had to pay gas in the car. And he, he quit that job mighty quick, thank the Lord. But he went by, he would get in the car and his moods were, and this gentleman had the Holy Ghost, but he was so dominant by his flesh that he, his whole mood was depressed all day if they were working in rain, if it was thundering, if it was all the which way, whatever it was. And my husband said it was, he prayed every day for sunshine, Monday through Friday. Lord, please let us have a sunshiny day. Because I have to live with that, his depression every day. I don't know what it is. I'd like us all to stand. And if we could all just come to walk up to the platform or to the pulpit. We also are going to pray here. um, Give this prayer covering in a moment for Andrew who's going to Kuwait. Kuwait, I think that's right. Is that right? Okay. And I'm just going to put it down here. Just a moment. We're going to pray in just a minute. Put I want you, somehow or another, I'd love for you to put a, just a steel rod down your back. A steel rod in your spirit that I will not let anything Deviate me off of the plan of God. I will not let anything. I'm amazed when we walked in the catacombs in Rome, in Italy, when Brother Limbo and I went, and I saw families, and if you've been in those catacombs, where they would go in the limestone and they would dig out holes in there and they made shelves for their family and you saw where a family would maybe have four children and four little shelves and one big shelf and oh my word uh, I would think they're living down in the catacombs down in those caves they're being eaten by lions above their head they're barely trying to find food And they know with Nero that any moment their children will be killed. 
and yet they're going to serve the Lord. That amazes me. That amazes me. That those, those parents had the bulldog strength of God that just looked at those families, as you know, where those babies were be thrown to the lions and the parents would stand and look at those babies as they wrapped sheepskin around them. And then history says, the Book of Martyrs says that, Fox's Book of Martyrs said the parents told the children, you know, we'll see you soon. And they just stood and they had them to watch as their babies were eaten up with lions. I know this sounds ridiculous. I know it sounds ridiculous. I know there's no one in here like that, but I have heard, being in the 50 years of the ministry, we pastored in Tennessee. We pastored a little bit in Wise before we had uh, that severe car wreck. Brother Limbo was disabled for about a year with that. But people honestly were compass, got off their compass over a sound system. Or they were acknowledged over, they were part of the penal brittle crowd and they forgot to name their name. I know that sounds ridiculous. But it happens in the United States of America. We're so blessed. Those of us have gone to Honduras. Those have gone to see those women come out of. We saw Danielle, them, those people living on that city. Uh, what was that dump? And see rats and these big hills of dump, the city dump. And they're having their houses built on those with houses and rats. Oh, those huge rats are running. You see them when we drive by. And they got their family on that dump, and they're coming to church. This too shall not move me, as Paul said. This is not going to move me. I know what I am. I know what I've got to do. This morning, I'd like you individually to say this, God, wake me up. Let me see my compass. John F. Kennedy Jr., oh, I wish someone would have said, something's off. Something's off. And I'm, they said by the time if he did see the water, it was too late to pull up. He just hit the ground, hit the water, and went straight down to the bottom as fast as he was flying. And I'm praying this morning, there's no one in here that will ever find out and never get on the bottom, as the Bible says, that scripture that I read to you about, um, that scripture that I read to you about, um, curse be the man that trusteth in man and make a flesh his arm. And it goes, he shall be like a heath in the desert and shall not see when good cometh. I want all of us to end up where God always wanted you to. I want you to talk to God. If you feel like you're off your compass, or if you haven't even looked at the instrument panel, somehow or another, I just want you by yourself to say, Jesus, help me get back. Help me get back. Or, God, am I, am I on it? You know, am I on it? And am I on it? I want you to pray by yourself. Are you on your compass? Are you on the route that God had planned for you? Let's all pray individually. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, Lord.